uh, land south of former St. John's School. Phil, Thomas is just going to take us through the application, please. Thank you, Chair. I'll share a plan if, if I may just uh, yes. help us with this. OK, yeah. for the purpose of the recording, I'm Phil Thomas, team leader East and officer responsible for this application. Uh, thank you to Chair and members of the site visit panel on the local member for joining officers and the applicants a consultant on site yesterday when we were able to review the proposed footpath route that will connect the new housing development on the former St John's School site to the footpath and public right of way known locally as Puddle Lane. The footpath and public right of way connects Birch Walk and Church Street incorporates a kissing gate and post and rail fence midpoint along this section of the right of way. Um, the plan on page 87 in the report and on the screen now uh, shows the position alignment of the one and a half meter wide path. The S shaped form of the route helps to achieve the gradient over the changing site levels, which based on the submitted plan fall from 1.2 meters from the highest point at the northern end of the proposed path. Photographs of the site for members that weren't there. Yes, they are reproduced on page 88 of the report. Mm. Mem Members will note in the consultation response is an objection from the town council. In fairness, that was based on the originally submitted plans, which lacked detail. No further comments have been received from the town council to the reconsultation that we undertook on the basis of revised plans that were submitted. Members will note the support from the proposed for the proposed link from the highway section. However, objections to the development have been received from residents and they are summarised on page 90 of the report. Members, I, I would suggest the main issues for you to consider today are whether the principle of creating a footpath link in this location is acceptable, will the design and location of the route safeguard the amenities of the area and the living conditions of local residents, and critically, is the route acceptable in terms of pedestrian safety? Dealing first with the principles, well, its development within the settlement boundary of Puth Call. It improves the pedestrian accessibility of the proposed housing development. And although it's only a minor addition, um, it's recognised this improved pedestrian link is an element in realising the LDP strategy, which promotes sustainability, encouraging healthier lifestyle and increased physical activity. So I think in, in very broad terms, the principle of creating the Rook is supported by local and national policy. Um, it's design. What impacts does design have on the local character and the areas more generally? We're always trying to achieve the highest in design, but what we have here is groundworks associated with the formation of the route, which are you know, relatively minor in scale compared to the larger housing development. Residents have suggested that the footpath will be detrimental to the wildlife habitat and fauna, resulting in a loss of green space. Um, any loss will be modest, although it would be necessary to revise the landscaping proposals for this part of the site, as the line of the route will conflict with one of the agreed trees that were to be planted as part of that scheme. A revised plan will be secured by planning condition and there may be some opportunity some to secure some additional planting in the areas and there's a condition on the report in that regard safeguarding and enhancing enhancing biodiversity and green infrastructure is a requirement in all that we do now in terms of our section six duties um, the sporting planning statement suggests that the development would have minimal ecological impact as the proposed uh, land on which it's been developed has minimal ecological value uh, no existing trees will be impacted by the proposed development and measures have been introduced that will protect the trees that adjoin the route um, from the construction. It's through the larger scheme, there's been enhancement of woodland habitat, lots of new native tree and shrub planting, new bird nesting and bat roosting opportunities. I think the wider development has addressed the Section 6 duty, and there will be a net benefit for biodiversity. Uh, basically, the impacts of this section of works is, is, is very modest. Key issue, um, 
in terms of highway safety and creating the link. Well, as confirmed by the highway section, the proposed link path will improve connectivity to the existing rights of way network, meeting the aims of the Active Travel Act and Planning Policy Wales. Residents have suggested that the design of the route will encourage an authorised re use, reducing the effectiveness of the kissing gate and fences that were erected some years ago to deter such unauthorised use. The plans as originally submitted did suggest that the existing fencing would need to be removed to accommodate the link path, but the latest drawings show the fencing retained and extended to control access. A condition will be imposed to agree a scheme of access controls to the, uh, the path and there's uh, a condition um, included in the report. Members, I need just to raise an issue. It was a question that was uh, given to us by Councillor Griffiths yesterday and it regarded the maintenance of this route going forward and how the process of adoption would take place. It's a little bit of a complicated process of adoption because the route does cross land that is neither within the control of the council or the developer, but there is a process of adoption. Looking at the design of the route, however, I think there's some thought being given as to whether something could be done possibly to the design and the alignment of it just to um, deal with maybe some maintenance, maintenance issues going forward, should it be something that the uh, council will be asked to take on as part of the wider network within the site. So we're actually going to, and I will address it at the end of, uh, of my talk, we're just going to uh, recommend uh, some changes to the conditions just to pick up some issues that we'd like to discuss further with Taylor Wimpy. I think the basics are we, we, we all, or we think that the route's a good idea and I think it will have a wider benefit, but I think we possibly just need to deal with some of the issues with the design of it. Uh, in terms of getting a route that if it becomes ours to adopt and maintain that um, it's not going to present any challenge, you know, challenges for us as an authority going forward. The last consideration was, you know, the impact it would have on the amenity of residents. Um, we looked at that quite carefully because the land is a little higher than the properties to the south of the site. But overall, I think we took the view that the, the living conditions of existing residents will not be compromised. There will be a degree to which some of the residents of the new houses could be, it could be argued, would be affected because it would encourage more footfall through that turning head. But it is a highway at the end of the day. There is pedestrian movement in that area. And to quantify the impact of additional pedestrians walking through on impacts, I, I, I just don't see that as being a significant issue. And I think it could always, always be argued that the benefits of creating the link possibly outweigh some of the impacts it may have. So in conclusion, our starting point always is that the policies of the adopted plan and we think the route is uh, the proposed link will safeguard the amenities of the area, the living conditions of local residents. Furthermore, the route is acceptable in terms of pedestrian safety. Notwithstanding the objections received, the proposal is compliant with local and national policy and no matters have been submitted or evidence provided to suggest that planning should be permission should be withheld subject to conditions uh, the development is acceptable and the recommendation is set out on page 94. As I said I, I'm, I'm going to ask members permission if it is okay that we look to replace conditions one and two with a condition that looks to agree uh, the revised design of this footpath and alignment and that will incorporate the um, measures to control unauthorised access to route, route, including bollards, enclosures, etc. And bizarrely enough, as I was reading the report during the committee today, condition three has got four words missing for the from part of the wording of that condition. So I'm just going to ask members with their permission again that we can just make a slight adjustment to the wording of that condition too. Um, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. You can see the officer's recommendation on page 94 with the amendment. Can somebody formally move and second, please? Move. move. Second. One second, Richard. Thank you. OK, Simon, you want to come in? Yeah, I'll just say thank you for the officers for uh, the site visit yesterday. That was really helpful. Um, I, I think I'm, I'm really going to um, very 
keenly welcome this proposal because I think it's regularizing what is clearly a, a desire path, so where it is an extensive use at the moment. However, it's extensive use by people who are on two feet. If you're pushing a buggy or a wheelchair, then it, it doesn't have that access at the moment. So I think this will actually significantly improve that. Um, and, and, I, and I also welcome the considerations you've got to preventing um, vehicle access and, and motorbike access. So uh, thank you very much, Phil, for the work you put into this. I think it's good. And um, I, I will be happy to delegate to, to Phil to carry on that work and make the, the suggestions that, that he made. So thank you very much to everybody. Simon, can you formally move that then? And I'll ask somebody to second it, please. Okay, so formally move what I've just said. Thank you. Can I somebody second, second that? Richard. Thank, thank you, Tony. So that's all done for you, Phil. OK, uh, Councillor Pratt, please. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Yes, um, obviously the, the the committee would have seen my um, my views. This may come as a, I mean, obviously I'm the local member as well as sitting on this committee um, that uh, a small footpath can become so contentious, I suppose. But, um, you know, we have seen during the construction of St. John's people taking advantage of now the lack of protections that exist there. Um, I mean, I've personally stopped motorbikes going through Puddle Lane um, or, or, or on my way traveling around the ward, and it, it's been quite difficult for residents in the area. So my, my concerns and which has been shared by local residents about ensuring that this is a footpath. Um, from a personal point of view, it's annoyed me that, I mean, Taylor Wimpy have left this hole expecting this to be approved. So it has caused problems over the last couple of months, year, maybe even longer than that, however long it's been. Um, but, you know, it, it needs to be repaired um, quickly. So uh, my question to Phil, and, and, and I respect where you're coming from, but could you give me a bit more detail? over um, your proposals to to the one and two that, um, you know, because obviously it says notwithstanding the submitted plans within one month of this date. So it is sort of pushing it along a little bit further. I appreciate what you're trying to do. Um, just sort of like what, how, how long will this process take? Is this a, is this a quick email? Is this a, a, a long, um, discussion you have to have with Taylor Wimpy because I'd like to get it done as quickly as possible and I'm sure you can understand that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Pratt. Phil. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good it's a good question. We, we, we don't want to drag this out too much longer. I, I think engagement with Taylor Wimpy uh, as soon as we possibly can is, is, is key. Um, from from what I gather, and you know, it, it, it's what they told me. They they're keen to sort of progress this because they are coming to the final throws, as it were, with this development anyway. Whether they're, they're finishing finishing off the final houses, and they will want to see, I'm sure, roads adopted and and and, and move on to the next site as as housing developers do. So I think I think early engagement, um, you know, within the next seven to ten days, I'll make some representation to say, look, we do need to look at this design slightly differently in terms of. Um, adoption and, and going forward in terms of the maintenance and I think what we can do council I don't think Jonathan or Rodri would have an issue that we as a local member will try and engage with you through this process and just keep you abreast of the situation because as you, as you quite rightly said you've taken the heat in terms of um, criticisms that have come towards towards us as an authority and, and uh, regarding this development and it, it's been a bit of a bumpy route but I, I think I th there's probably just a couple of things I need need to be clear on because um, the route is not a requirement of the original planning permission. So um, they're not required under the terms of the consent they had for the housing development to provide this link. It's kind of come in towards the latter stages of the process. Possibly not, it wasn't incorporated originally because this whole issue of land ownership was felt that was such a barrier. There was something that they couldn't do. But I think for one reason or another, Taylor Wimpy have come round to the idea that thinking this is a good idea to create the link through there. So I think we want to work with them, but I suppose there's an element that we don't want to frighten them off. I, I, I'm not. I think I'm choosing my words right here. I, I, I want to encourage them to work with us because they could turn around and say, right, if you know, if you're putting up too many barriers, <laughs> sorry, for, sorry for the panel difficulties, then we they, they may not want to complete the route. So I think there's, it's it's in careful engagement with them. Um, to, to secure what we need to get as an authority, 
secure the continuation of Puddle Lane and not this be a, a leakage point whereby unauthorized users can get onto Puddle Lane? Because I, I think I totally get that. We don't want motorbikes trooping back and forth you because obviously that's been a historical problem which has been dealt with by the kissing gate and the fencing. And if we're somehow introducing a route that then sort of negates that and bypasses it, that, that won't be a good outcome for anybody. So I think key issue is they're not required to provide it. We need to engage with them. And I think that's a process we'll try and start as soon as we possibly can. And pop some comfort, councillor, we can try and keep you as engaged as a local member as to how that is developing. And if, you know, if plans are drawn up, schemes are there, I, I'll certainly share them with you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. And also don't forget, Phil, you've had permission now to alter the uh, one yes. and two and alter words in number three. Yeah, yeah. to suit yeah. you said whatever you. you want yeah. to do. Thank you very much. Yes. Oh, OK, as nobody else wants to speak on this, is there anybody against this application going through? Well, that's unanimous. Thank you for that. We go on to the next one. Thanks, Phil. Uh, is you, 50 yeah. Coity Road, Bridgend. Rodri, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, the applicant on this one is seeking planning permission for the change of use of the property from a dwelling to a small house in multiple occupation. There will still be five bedrooms in the property. It is in a sustainable location and there are no changes to the external appearance of the building. Conditions are attached to the recommendation to secure five cycle parking spaces for the future residents and a suitable bin store uh, and arrangement. As confirmed by the applicant in the statement attached to the amendment sheet, I hope members have had a chance to read that, the premises will be used in te to temporarily house single adults. They already operate in 10 councils across South Wales and operate 58 temporary accommodation units. The use of the property is a small HMO, is acceptable in land use planning terms, which is the only consideration for the local planning authority. And as advised for the two HMO applications that were put before you members at the uh, previous DC committee in September, other legislation through licensing will, will also have to be ad adhered to by the uh, applicant. Mm. And if the HMO is not operated in accordance with the license, and the controls of the license, the license can be withdrawn under other controls. Uh, the application is recommended for approval, subject to conditions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Rodri. You can all see the recommendation on page 106. Can, uh, can somebody move the officer's recommendation with the amendment, please? Move. Thank you. Seconded. Thank you, Simon. Any questions to officers? To Rodri. Oh, Steve. Uh, as I made the declaration earlier, Chair, that uh, I've obviously read the, the paperwork that we have, but uh, I am don't enter into any planning, uh, anything to do with planning with the Town Council. Um, the pages just sort of flicked over, really. Um, on the, the consultations on page 100. Um, I don't know if it's appropriate for me to say, read it. It says members felt that the figures reported by BCBC to Welsh Government do not support the need for additional HMOs within the Gent Town Centre area, council area, to accommodate homeless people. Um, I'm a little confused, really. I don't understand that. wonder if... Uh, if officers or any other um, councillors that are online actually could could give me some clarification for that, because I I I haven't read that before and obviously uh, wouldn't be privy to it because I exclude myself during any sort of discussions in Bridgend Town Council uh, regarding planning. I'm sure Roddy will be more than happy to come back and answer that question. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Chair, thank you, Councillor. Yeah. The the BTC comments are copied in verbatim there into the uh, consultation responses. Um, I think it's probably a two-way thing. I think they've, I'm not sure where the figures have come from for this one, but uh, this is the statement from BTC. Um, so obviously we report back to the Welsh Government on how many HMOs we have in Bridgend uh, town area. I think we, uh, 
we worked out on the basis of the two HMO applications that went to the last meeting that they were around 15 HMOs in Bridge End. Um, so from our point of view, that is not sufficient, even 16, 17 is not sufficient for us to class that as being an open testification of HMOs um, in this particular area or even in Bridge End Town, town uh, Centre. So so it's uh, it's not as if it's got to that point where it's uh, uh, breaching that over intensification sort of level. Mm -hmm. um, so from a from a land use planning point of view, what we've got to look at is the impact of this development in terms of uh, uh, planning considerations only, sort of uh, overlooking uh, issues like that, privacy, uh, residential amenity and neighbours, uh, parking, yeah. which there is none. So there there also is none. So there is status quo on that front. Um, and and its proximity to uh, to yeah. local services and facilities. So so it's um, from our point of view, from a planning point of view, and land use planning terms, it's perfectly acceptable because that could be a, a quite a big family in there existing within the five bedroom dwelling. So um, there's nothing that we can get involved with from that point of view. And the over intensification of HMOs is more to do with uh, perhaps. HMOs in university towns like um, Swansea or, or Cardiff, which which there is, they've got SPGs on the mat and and it is a particular uh, issue. I know we've got Bridgen College, but that is a, a different age group, so it's it's unlikely that uh, the kids who go to that college will need to have digs or or lettings in in Bridgen itself. So so it's uh, it's not an issue for Bridgen. Uh, uh, this over intensification matter and uh, and it wouldn't be uh, a, an issue that we can raise as a point to uh, refuse this application because 15 in, in a town centre is, is not of a level that would be classed as over intensification. Um, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Rodri. Um, th th thank you, Rodri. I got, I got one uh, sort of supplementary comment, really, that um, I I, I notice, or we we all witness homelessness. Um, I personally don't fully understand it. I'm not involved in that sort of sector. Um, I do see that homelessness people are in Bridgend, um, and I do find them um, that sometimes they're in Newbridge Fields, uh, sometimes they're in Tiarth, which is the old registry office, um, and I'm aware that somebody is is looking to obviously support homelessness or the homeless in Bridgend um, by 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 tents. And so I, I maybe we'll see the amount of tents cropping up in Bridgend. And I must admit, I would prefer to see a, uh, a properly sort of planned HMO than a lot more tents arriving in Bridgend. Um, it's homelessness is not perhaps something that we in this committee can can address. It's it's for possibly social services. Um, but I think that it, it certainly overlaps onto what we do, which is why we're talking about HMOs. But um, I just see that there is a homelessness problem. Um, and when I sort of hear about the triggers are not being reported uh, correctly, perhaps to BCBC, to Welsh Government, I have no evidence of that. Um, however, I think the figures need to be accurate and they really re reflect what the situation actually is in our town centre. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Easterbrook. Uh, Councillor Pratt. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Yeah, I'll just go, uh, go back to um, Bridgend Town Council's comments. I think I know what they're trying to do um, uh, and in some ways quite clever. Um, it, it's um, Rodri sort of mentioned on it. Obviously, like if you have a university town, um, there are need for HMOs in a sort of large scale because we're, we're within walking range of um, uh, um of of the university um so i if if, if Rodri doesn't mind you explore more for me the over intensification for hmos is it a general thing or can you relate it to a homelessness need or is it is, is it just hmos in general whatever the use they are be it for students homeless people or a preferred way of renting, if, if, if that makes sense, because I, I can see what the Town Council are doing. They're, 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 they're arguing over the homelessness figures. So 
they want to say, well, what do you need a HMO for homelessness on? Because the figures don't reflect this need of housing. So is it a HMO in general or can you re rein it back in if it's homelessness? I hope that makes sense. Thank you. Thank yeah, you no, it, it, it is in general, but it, uh, from the Welsh Government point of view, they provided guidance on the matter and it, it was geared towards the the Swansea, the Cardiff, the bangers of this world, where there's a open, there is an intensification of, of students in a particular area. And uh, it it can, once put in one sort of street, for example, in Cates and Cardiff, probably, uh, probably 20 out of 21 houses are in student accommodation. So it's, it, it can become an issue, particularly, uh, uh, when the when the students leave for uh, for the summer or whatever, and there's bins out and and everything like that, so that's that over intensification does cause uh, public amenity issues at that point. Um, but with the homeless, um, I don't I don't think we can make a case that there there aren't enough homeless in Bridgen to justify more HMOs to provide this accommodation for them. And uh, uh, like the applicant says, it's a t temporary accommodation until. Whoever's there um, moves on to a, another suitable uh, accommodation, you know. So it's uh, it, it it does f fit the demand, and I'm uh, pretty sure with the way things are going, it, it's it's only going to get worse in terms of the homeless. So it's uh, it's it's something that's desperately needed. But from a Bridgem point of view, 15 in the whole of the town, uh, I don't think we've got to that point where it's really getting. Uh, an over intensification of of the same use in the, in this particular area. So, uh, um, I hope that answers your questions, councillor. But uh, but you're right. It's uh, the guidance from Welsh government is more towards rather than concentrating on homeless HMOs. It's more towards the student uh, uh, and the problems that arise from from a, a over intensification of student uh, lettings and and accommodation. Um, and up until up until what was it 2017 there was a a right to convert to a small hmo anyway so it, uh, from a dwelling so with the change in use classes uh, it's just a matter now that they have to apply to convert a dwelling to a small hmo for between three and six individual occupiers and related occupiers sharing basic facilities um and then but it would have been over that uh, six, uh, seven or more sort of large HMOs who would have needed consent anyway because that's not in any use class. But uh, but that's that's by the by. It's uh, in this instance, it's just a matter that they do need permission for it because it's a technical change of use. But from our point of view as a planning authority and you as a DC committee uh, members, we can only look at it from 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 a planning consideration point of view. And uh, in land use planning terms, it's almost identical to having a family there. So, uh, uh, but. The safety net is that there are other uh, legislation and regulations that have to be complied with mm. uh, elsewhere in the, in the authority and they they have the power to uh, withdraw or rescind that license if uh, if it's not operated in a in a proper manner which i'm sure the the applicant uh, as he's as he's expressed in the statement in the amendment sheet is uh, well averse with with that process thank you thank you thank you Rodri. simon Apologies, but on the same topic, I just want to note that as a borough, we have a responsibility to house all homeless people. And so we, we tend not to see people appearing in tents because we speak to them and we find them somewhere to live. And that's often us as an authority paying for hotel accommodation or hostel hostel accommodation. And that, that means our our expenditure on providing accommodation for those people without a home um, has gone up. I can't remember the exact numbers, but I think it's about four million pounds per year. Yes. So yeah. if we want to to reduce our council tax and keep it as low as possible, the best thing that we can actually do is to provide low, low cost rentals or affordable home homes for those people who are, are struggling to pay rental in, in larger houses. So so I actually welcome the conversion to, to, um, to HMOs. And the more that we have, it means that the the less we will have to pay in council tax because we're not after to cover those people. So um, I welcome this and it's not pertinent to this particular application, but I just wanted to put on record that that we as a borough are paying out a lot of money at the moment to uh, to support people who can't find affordable accommodation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Simon. Point well made. Councillor Martin Hughes, please. 
Yeah, it's, it's on the same uh, line very much so, Chair, actually. I think what we've seen here is uh, an incorrect interpretation by Bridgend Town Council on the actual data that's provided by BCBC to Welsh Government. Mm. And it is really important, um, you know, when statements are made that they are validated and uh, it's a truthful account. So what, what I would um, have expected is some validation, attempted validation from housing services within BCBC so that we have an actual uh, factual account of the situation. Thanks. Thank you for that comment, Councillor Hughes. Councillor Alan Waltham, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. No question, just some comments, really. Uh, thank the officers for sending the amendment uh, report out last night in relation to this matter. And on reading it, it's, it's really good reading. It's wonderful to see that uh, this company have put a well thought out management plan in in relation to this property with CCTV cameras covering communal parts of property, a dedicated house manager visiting daily, full-time maintenance manager, refuge collections weekly. It's wonderful to see. I would uh, would love to see this type of plan put in place for other HMOs when, when they come up for uh, approval, because that is the only way forward to ensure that they are run correctly and to alleviate any problems for neighbours or people uh, nearby. So, you know, it's, it's well, it's nice to see as well done. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Waltham, for that remarks. Councillor Stephen at Easterbrook, please. Um, it, it's only since being on the planning committee have I really understood what the HMO is and um, as to how many We've, we've been told by an officer earlier that there was 15 HMOs in Bridgend. And uh, if I, as a resident, if I think of that there are always groups of people living together, uh, those may not necessarily be HMOs. However, if they were perhaps six or then they would be HMOs. Mm. Um, and and I, I wonder, um, and my, my son was in Cate's in university and, and that was student land and we don't have student land in Bridgend um, and I wouldn't want to say I'd like to see a homeless land of uh, an intensification of homeless people um, but but we are told that maybe it's it, it's good I think it's good with students for being in, in that one area um, I, I think that where people are being integrated into the community that to have too many HMOs in one place, is that a good thing? And that's obviously a consideration of this planning committee, that, that when we're considering HMOs, it's it's the, um, the, the rest of the area. Otherwise, we could have an intensification of uh, HMOs. So where in principle they are important, all housing is important, um, but I, I think diversity certainly comes into it, that if you get a congregation of, um, of, of students, then you would expect sort of perhaps um, on the weekend there would be sort of noise or drunken, uh, a bit tipsy because students do like to, uh, to go for a drink. To me, it, it's about antisocial behaviour. And if you have groups of like-minded people, I don't say that would increase antisocial behaviour, but it, it it may. And I certainly um, uh, echo what Councillor Waltham has said, is when somebody is taking this seriously and that they are putting security measures in, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that is that is certainly a responsible thing. But I yeah. think as a planning committee, we certainly need to look at, at um, proximity of, of certain properties. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for that. Councillor Della Hughes, please. 
Hi, just, just a comment really to agree with what Councillor Simon Griffiths said. And um, although this application is to be used as a HMO for homeless people who then will be moving on, I think we can all agree when you look at the figures and the amount of single people looking for accommodation. In my in my valley alone recently, oh. uh, something was going to close. 40 people, individual single people came forward to say they would want to live there. So this is something we do need to provide for um for, for, for anybody and it might not just be homeless people people are think times are still hard there mm -hmm. are people losing their homes so there's lots mm -hmm. of reasons why we need this um sort of accommodation and again as councillor griffith says the cost to the authority is is phenomenal so yeah welcome these applications thank you councillor hughes for them remarks well you've seen the officer's recommendation it's been moved and seconded uh is there anybody against this application I take it by the silence. No, so we're all in favour then. OK, thank you very much. If we go on to item 13, now I'm not going to go through this as I normally do. Has anybody got any questions on the appeals decisions to the officer? Please uh, make a, recommenda a recommendation or, or whatever. Please put your hand up. If not, we will move on swiftly through that to uh, item uh, agenda 14 uh, and you can see the training log there uh, development in conserv conservation areas that's going to be done within the next six weeks right so that's the next one in six weeks time that we'll have and then obviously uh, I've spoken with uh, Jonathan and we will look at perhaps uh, looking at different avenues than what we've got now for training is everybody happy with the training log Yeah, we'll aim, we'll aim uh, to have something of uh, conservation and building, building building conservation officers, but uh, um, I know they're particularly busy at the minute, so they, it might not be possible for the next available one, but we'll we'll arrange something from that list of, of training sessions for the next meeting, uh, Chair. Thank you. Th thank you for that. Principal Officer? Yeah, th thank you, Chair. We, we'll, we'll, we've, we've got the list of which we will try to work through. I think some some of the uh, external um, speakers that, that may be difficult to to arrange. Certainly, with the, the chief planning inspector, who is who is extremely busy and uh, may not be to the next year that we can arrange um, in, in that particular session. Um, um, again, I always say this to members: if you if you've got any topic areas that you you wish to have training in, anything specific, uh, I've heard today that some some members were um, were weren't sure about certain terminologies and and types of, of properties and uh, stories, two stories, three stories. If you want any further clarification or any further discussion on those, then we can run that as a, as a, as a, as a separate training session. Um, but please let me know. Please um, forward any suggestions, uh, either through the Teams chat or or on to um, or, or an email to myself or Rodri, and we, we will see what we can set up. Thanks. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, I haven't got anything urgent items. And with that, I'd like to thank everybody for their uh, attendance today. Last minute again, we've had to go back to uh, the laptops. But thank everybody.